Sometimes going out of your comfort zone is not easy when it comes to fish keeping. Salt water is one of those things, but today I'm going to tell you how easy it really can be. Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Zenzo from Tazawa Tanks. Now I do read the comments in my videos and a lot of you have asked about this topic. A lot of you want to know how I set up my saltwater aquarium. For those of you that are new to my channel, I mostly specialize in freshwater and some brackish water and I do have one saltwater tank. Now to give a little bit of history, I have had experience with saltwater in the past. Um, I do have an aquarium service business and I had to kind of teach myself over the years how to take care of saltwater cram. So I first started experimenting a few years ago and uh, doing some saltwater tanks down here in the fish room and also had to learn how to do reef tanks, etc. Now, I haven't had a lot of saltwater tanks. I did have a nano reef tank about a couple of years ago. And then I recently set up this tank here, which is a Fowler tank, meaning fish only with live rock. Today, what I wanna do is talk a little bit about how I set it up and what you would need to do to also set up your own saltwater aquarium. Now, I'm gonna break this up into several steps. The first step is to do your research, and that's what you're doing right now if you're watching this video. You wanna do your research to understand what it requires to take care of a saltwater aquarium. That means you're gonna to have to research to know what kind of equipment you might need, how to make salt water, what kind of fish might be appropriate for your tank that you have, what kind of tank you might need to buy, other things like that. So making sure that you do your research in the beginning is gonna be critical. Once you've gotten your research out of the way, you pretty much know what you're gonna do, so you need to kind of put your whole kit together. Now in my situation, I have a very, very simple aquarium. It's just a 20 gallon glass aquarium with a lid that I made, which I've made a video about, and I'll put a link of that up here. A lid that I made, I have some substrate in there. I'm using aragonite, which is, um, has kind of a buffering quality, like crushed coral, but you could also use sand as an example or crushed coral. I happen to use aragonite. And then I have some rocks in there. Now I have a mixture of live rock and dry rock. Live rock would be rocks that you buy from the aquarium store that are already in salt water that have beneficial bacteria in it. Usually it's like a piece of coral, or in some cases it could be some lava rock or something that has some beneficial bacteria in it, but usually it's a coral. Now, other than that, I don't really have anything else in there as far as decorations. I have one little kind of shell thing in there that I threw in there. And then as far as filtration, I am running this on a sponge filter. A sponge filter is one of the easiest filters that you can run. Um, it's very inexpensive. It's not very high tech. So this is again for a Fowler tank. So this is not for having corals and things like that. If you're gonna get into like having corals, then I would suggest investing in some other equipment, some other filtration and doing a little bit more research. But in my situation, I'm running just a sponge filter. I also have a power head in there that's adding some water movement and some flow. But other than that, that's all I have in there as far as equipment. So basically all you need to do is do your research and know what equipment to get for the aquarium that you're gonna be putting together and then procure those items and uh, get ready to set up your tank. Now when setting up your tank, it's very much like a freshwater aquarium. You're going to, uh, you know, take care of your products that you're going to put in there, rinse them, etc. If you want to wash out the sand or the substrate, put them in there and start decorating your tank and setting it up. Now, when it comes to the cycling process, it's very much like a freshwater aquarium. You're going to need to be patient. With this tank, I actually had to wait two months before I was ready for fish. Even though I had some live rock in there, I didn't put the live rock in there for the first several weeks. So the first few weeks, it was just the water and the dry rock that was in there. Then I added some live rock and kind of sped up the process a little bit. But basically you wanna go through the nitrogen cycle and that process to make sure that the water is safe for the fish to go in there. So you don't wanna have anything where your fish are getting some kind of toxic shock, an ammonia shock or a spike of nitrite and kill the fish. So you wanna make sure that you're patient and go through that process very much like a freshwater aquarium. Now one thing I do wanna talk about, which is probably the part that trips up a lot of people when it comes to salt water, and that's the water itself. Now there are a couple of options when it comes to salt water. One option is you buy the salt water that's already pre-made and that is very simple. So you can go to the store and you can either buy like the pre-packaged uh, five gallon buckets of the uh, pre-made um, salt water or in some cases a lot of aquarium stores will have like a large uh, 
bin or container or a giant tank where they are, um, you know, like a giant holding tank that's several hundred gallons where they're getting it from some vendor and then they can just uh, pour as much as you need into different uh, containers that you can bring home with you. So there are a couple of options. Um, that is an option that a lot of people do because they just feel more comfortable with buying the water versus making it. For me, I like to make the salt water because it's very easy once you know what you're doing. Now, when it comes to making salt water, it's pretty basic. You just have to follow the instructions on the package of salt that you purchase. I happen to use salt from Fritz Aquatics, and uh, this is the, uh, the salt that I use. It's the Reef Pro Mix. Um, there are a lot of other salts available. There are other salts from Fritz, as well as many other manufacturers, and I've used those in the past. Um, I am sponsored by Fritz, which is why I do use this product, but it is a very good product. It's very easy to mix but you could use any kind of aquarium salt that is available to you. Now I do want to preface, we're not talking about aquarium salt that you use for fresh water. We're not talking about um, a uh, rock salt or anything like that. We are talking about a salt made specifically for salt water slash reef aquariums. They have different, uh, it's a different uh, blend of salt. There's other uh, minerals and things in there that is uh, specifically formulated to replicate the salt water in the ocean. Okay, so I just want to pause real quick. I'm actually doing some editing and I realized that there's something in this video that I left out and it's really not that important as far as this video is concerned but I feel like a lot of people that know about salt water tanks, that know about reef tanks are going to comment down below about something that they think I'm doing wrong and that is the water that I use to make salt water. Now if you have uh, corals, if you have um, a reef tank, um, so you have a higher tech uh, salt water tank where you have live corals and softies, special lighting, refugiums, etc. You are going to probably want to use uh, RODI water, which is reverse, os reverse osmosis, uh, deionized water. But basically what it is, is, is taking water through a complex filtering system so that you're just resulting in pure H2O without all the other additives and, and other things that uh, municipalities and, and uh, cities, et cetera, put in the water to make it safe for human consumption or stuff, you know, metals that you wouldn't want in there for the coral. And then you would add your minerals back in along with your salt. So you would make salt water from this pure H2O. With a Fowler tank, it's not that critical because you don't have anything in there that's hypersensitive to those things. Um, so you can use regular tap water that is dechlorinated. So if you have chlorine, you'll want to use something that removes chlorine. If you have chloramine, you'll want to use something that removes chloramine from your water system and then make your salt water. So just like fresh water, you can use tap water if you are um, doing uh, just a regular Fowler tank without some other organisms in the uh, tank that do require something that's a little bit uh, safer for them. So anyway, just wanted to insert this quick little video clip in here just to make people aware that RO water is not really necessary just for a saltwater tank without live corals. So once you have your salt, you just need to basically put your salt mix together following the instructions on the package of salt that you buy. You could do it in a bucket, you can do it in like a large garbage can if you have a large aquarium. Um, I happen to do mine in little five gallon uh, water jugs and it's very, very easy to do with all the directions. Now one thing that you are gonna need is you're gonna need something to measure the salinity or specific gravity. Now some people are sticklers and they say talk about specific gravity, don't talk about salinity because you're really measuring specific gravity and not salinity. But just for the layman, we're gonna say salinity because that's what most people understand, salinity meaning the level of salt. So you need something to measure the level of salt in the water. I happen to like to use the refractometer. Um, it's very simple. Um, it's just basically an eyeglass piece that uh, will tell you the specific gravity, the salinity level in the water that you're testing. If I were to do fresh water, I could put some fresh water on this little piece of glass here, click it down, hold it up to some light, look through the eyepiece, and I would see just clear blue because it would be fresh water with no salt in it. If I were to test my salt water tank, there's going to be different levels. So in there, there's lines, and it will tell you how much uh, salt is in the water by the specific gravity. So it'll say like 1.021 as an example. Then you could say, okay, I've got the right amount of salt for my salt water tank. There are other tools that you can use. You can use what's called a hydrometer. It's a lot less expensive. Um, and uh, it's a little bit more difficult to use. It's a little bit finic more finicky because you have to like be patient and tap it to make sure there's no bubbles on it. Um, 
you have to get your hands wet where this you don't have to. You can just use a little uh, eyedropper kind of a thing and put some water on there. But you can use a hydrometer as well and I've used those in the past. But I do prefer the refractometer. And these are becoming more and more common now. They're less expensive than they used to be. So you can find some out there for a pretty good price. Once you uh, put your salt water together, you just have to make sure that, you know, as you're making it, that you have to mix it thoroughly. You can use like a power head or some kind of submersible pump. I happen to just put an air stone and, uh, on an airline and drop that into the bottom of the tub and into the uh, bucket that I'm using and let that bubble for a couple of days and that's mixing the water up and uh, then the uh, salt is completely dissolved and then I can do a water change. Um, doing water changes is just like any freshwater cream. You're just gonna remove water and add in the new water that you made or purchased. Um, so it's very, very simple. The only thing that you need to do is make sure that the salinity level between the water that you're taking out that's in the aquarium and the water that you're adding is matched. So other than that, it's very much like a freshwater tank. There really isn't a lot of science behind it other than what you already know if you do happen to take care of freshwater aquariums. Um, just the main thing being having to mix salt water or buy salt water. It's very, very simple. What I do like about having a salt water aquarium is the type of fish that are available are a lot different than what you find in the freshwater hobby, specifically when it comes to colors. Now, obviously I've got some African cichlids up there and they are very colorful and I have some other colorful fish here in my fish room, but there's not much that really rivals what you can find in the saltwater hobby. And then you can find some other cool stuff, some invertebrates, some different kinds of shrimps and things like that that you wouldn't find in the freshwater hobby. So I hope you found this short little video useful. I didn't get too much into detail about how to create a saltwater tank just because I wanted to keep it very high level and uh, hopefully make it easy for all of you to understand. So this is really geared towards the freshwater fish keeper that's interested in keeping a saltwater tank. It's a lot easier than you might think once you can get past the idea of having to make, make your own water, which is really not that difficult. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I would love to read down below in the comments your thoughts on saltwater aquariums. Have you tried them before? Do you have any? I'd love to read down below. That's all I had for now. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.